Hello, everyone. Welcome to Team 21. I hope you're enjoying your experience so far. My name is Leah Ryder. I am the Brand and Enterprise Marketing Senior Team Lead here at Trello, which is great because today I'm going to talk to you about seven Trello workflows for building your team's remote culture. So we've all been experiencing remote work like never before this year, but I don't want us to dwell on what's been going on in the past year because working from home during a pandemic is really a far cry from what remote work can be. So today, as we talk about your remote team culture and how you want to build that, I'd really encourage you to imagine your team and your company a year from now, two years from now. What does that look like? What are you hoping to see for your remote team as you go forward into this new chapter where remote work has entered into our lives as a, as a mainstay? How are you building a sustainable long-term culture that can support remote and hybrid work? How are you gonna build a team that can work from anywhere? This is the future state that should drive how you use your tools and set up your team for remote work success. And this state of mind really matters because the top struggles that we go through as remote workers will persist beyond the pressures of the pandemic and everything we've been through over the last year. Um, this slide and stat is from Buffer's State of Remote Work Report, um, but I can say that these top struggles rarely change from year to year. In fact, three of the top five are addressable within the remote team culture that you build. Combating collaboration, communication, and connection issues are always going to be a struggle. I know this because Trello has a 10-year history as a hybrid remote team. So everything I'm going to cover today and all of the things that I've learned working at Trello over the last five years have been built on our learnings of growing and scaling a team globally and all of the pain um, and learnings that have come from that. So as we talk about building your remote team culture, the best place that we feel to start is to get really hands-on with how you can build up your remote teamwork. I've been working remotely for over seven years, and the team I manage spans three countries. As the brand marketing team, we focus on building out templates and resources, talking to our users about the struggles they have with remote and hybrid work, and focusing on how to make that successful. Trello has 50 million registered users worldwide, and we can unequivocally say that this is one of the biggest challenges facing teams right now. So I can definitely say, that you're not alone, we're all in this together and learning as we go. So what I wanna show you today is not a discourse or thesis on the concept of culture and what that means for teams that are working from home offices or co-working spaces and, and distributed offices worldwide. What I want to show you today is a really practical set of templates and tips so you can build a foundation that your remote te team can go grow from. This is about building culture for the long term. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that all of these templates and resources are available for you to copy and use. Later on in the presentation, I'll show you links where you can head to get all of these templates to customize and use yourself. So as we're going through these steps, um, write down the names of the board templates that you like, and you'll be able to search them in our directory for free. So here's the roadmap we're going on today. This is our journey. Um, so let's start at the top and talk about how to set up your remote team hub. I'm going to be using this term a lot today. And when we talk about a digital hub, this could also be interchangeably called your team digital office. Um, it's the office that your team can access from anywhere. And what we want to do is focus on making this digital hub or office a great place to work. So think about what makes a great place to work for you and use that to inform and customize how you build this digital hub. Most of all, it should be available asynchronously and provide your team with everything they need to know about where things are happening, what projects and work are in play, why decisions are being made, when things are happening and do and how to accomplish their goals and tasks. 
Trello is, of course, the digital hub we're going to cover in depth here. If you're not familiar with Trello, uh, it's a visual collaboration tool that can help you manage projects together, uh, work on workflows and tasks, and be more productive. It helps you con um, connect, collaborate, and work together flexibly, whether you're co-located in office, all working from home, and depending on regardless of which team you work on. You may be familiar with the boards, list, and cards set up with Trello. It's akin to sticky notes on a whiteboard. Um, but from there, you take those boards, lists, and cards and customize them to create a central view of your team's resources, projects, tasks, and collaboration. We have integrations with over 200 top work tools. Automation can be implemented at every stage to make you more productive. And we have new views like a timeline view for project planning, calendar for due date management, table for spreadsheet view, and more. So there's a lot in Trello to help it function for you as a digital office. So let's talk about the first step. This is the home base. This is where your team will come when they need to get that when, where, why, and how that I mentioned. Primarily, this is related to your tool stack. So you wanna get clear on all the tools uh, that you use to manage your remote team and how they should be used. The first step is with synchronous communication. This is pretty simple and straightforward. I don't know how we would have all managed this year without, without chat and video tools like Slack and Zoom. But most importantly, I want to say that what you need to build remote team culture is not just to have the tool itself, but an understanding of when these tools are used. We use synchronous communication tool when we need face-to-face -face time, when things are too complicated to work out asynchronously in Slack. But there are also things we don't use this for. We don't use Slack and Zoom to make lasting decisions for our team or for the business, especially if other teammates can't attend. And we don't use these tools um, without pairing them with an asynchronous tool where we can log and record the results of the meeting. Once you have those um, laid out, you can add on shared calendar. This can be in Trello. You could use Google Calendar to keep a track of shared dates for when people are on vacation or launches, add in, in an open document storage or long form collaboration. Confluence is obviously great here and this is what we use. And finally, pair that all with, a, with an overarching digital workspace where you can get one major view of um, what is happening within your team. So here's our first template. In each template that I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain how it's built from left to right. So let's start on the left with the, here's the team list. Our team uses this exact board. Um, so we built this template right out of what we use every day. We encourage people to come here first. If they're looking for something, have a question, want to understand who's on vacation, or get a sense of which projects and priorities are in place. You can see we've got lists for team breakouts where we'll have people define their roles and responsibilities, best communication channels, preferred pronouns, that kind of thing, key resources from accounts we have and who's the owner, where to go to get help in major areas. We, we record all of our trainings and leave them here so people can access them. Frequently asked questions. This is a great time saver. I'm sure we all answer the same questions over and over again. Use those to create customized in-depth tutorials with answers here so people can self-serve on those questions. Team schedules, we love to put in not just vacation, but our top priorities for the week. So people will put in the top three things they're working on. Helps to give you a sense of what everyone is doing and what they're prioritizing. And then lastly, we add projects in progress. We definitely don't expect people to manage their projects from these cards. Rather, this is a portal into where all of that work is happening. So you may want to add just the overarching items like a due date attachments to the other boards or confluence pages where work is happening. And here we add in weekly updates of progress. 
Now I can show you templates and then move on. But what I'd rather show you next is how to know that if you invest in implementing these templates, you'll know that they're working. So here's the next um, section that you'll see with all of the next templates. So if you implement a home base like this team resources board, how do you know it's working? Well, when you have a systemized tool stack with rules of engagement and a source of knowledge like this, your team should be confident using this tool stack to communicate, collaborate, and provide status updates in the right channels at the right time. They'll feel comfortable navigating this open office first to find what they need, and then they'll let you know if they can't find it after trying the self-serve method, which shouldn't take them too much time based on this level of organization. And then you can observe that there's a healthy record of activity going on within the team. So you don't need to be micromanaging or wondering if people are isolated or not doing their, their job because everything should be um, marked and recorded in a shared place. All right, you've got your knowledge base set up. Now we wanna move into establishing regular communications on individual and team levels. So let's start with the one-on-one, -on -one, which should be between you and each of your teammates. So why are one-on-ones so important? Well, it's been scientifically shown that FaceTime drastically increases our ability to build relationships as humans and foster empathy. So it's really important to keep your cameras on and make this a safe space to connect and talk together on a regular basis. You wanna make this time valuable. So co-creating an agenda over the week by using a Trello board is really important. So surprise, this is the template I'm gonna show you how to set up a one-on-one -on -one, um, meeting agenda board. Um, but the way it works is during the week is when you think of these things you wanna talk about. So when you remember, run over to the Trello board or virtually run and, and put down a quick card onto the agenda. This way, nothing falls through the cracks. And these one-on-one -on -one meetings should anchor your team's FaceTime during the week. So it's really important to keep them consistent and avoid canceling or moving them around too much. I know that projects come up, priorities, it's really important. These things, meetings might feel flexible but if you treat these as the most important meetings in your week and keep them consistent, that creates a foundation on which those projects and, and more um, one-off or more high priority in the moment uh, collaboration moments become because you have this basis of time to talk. So here is the one-on-one -on -one meeting agenda that pretty much everyone at Trello uses with their manager. It's fairly simple to set up. Um, so let's quickly talk about how we use this. Uh, we just have a few lists, really. The leftmost list uh, is for just basic info. Um, here we have defined what the different labels mean, um, but we also add things here like the promotions primer if someone's keen on growing their career or top reads to know for the quarter related to pro top projects or just anything that's important, the vacation manual, those kinds of things. Labels are really helpful as you can see to help you quickly prioritize what to talk about. So if it's a really important thing that you or your team member has, they can add, for example, the blocker label and flag it here. One um, helpful outcome of this is that if you are also heading to the board before the one-on-one -on -one to add something and you see this, it helps so also helps you visually flag things earlier and maybe you can talk about it uh, before you get into the meeting. There are two lists here. Generally, you might think of a meeting agenda as being a shared list. The reason we have two here is to break it out between the team member and the manager because we wanna avoid monopolizing the time either as the manager or not getting to those important um, career conversations because the team member has so many ongoing day-to-day um, -day things to manage. So we wanna keep that balance and that's how, how we do it by separating them out. Later in the presentation, I'm gonna to talk to you about performance reviews. Um, your one-on-one -on -one board is a really great place to track the career goals and development that you have. Rather than having a whole separate structure for performance reviews, Rolling them into your weekly one-on-one -on -one means that it's always top of mind 
and creates um, kind of an actionable place to set those things in motion. Further in the template, then out of the topics, you can create actions or tasks that you're going to do. And then you can use further lists as you, as you want to do follow up on actions or track them in a done list, which gives you actually a really nice, healthy record of quarterly or annual activity that each report has accomplished. So you've got a one-on-one -on -one board and a weekly one-on-one -on -one setup with each of your team members. How do you know it's working? Your team members should be adding items to discuss throughout the week. So you're walking in to every meeting with a healthy agenda that's broken out by team member and manager. You're both taking initiative to track and follow through on outcomes from those meetings. So you're seeing not only a, a valuable face time with each other, but outcomes out of those meetings. And because this is a safe space, you should feel in touch with their progress on the work, as well as understanding how they're doing mentally and emotionally. Especially this year, we, we understand how important it is to keep in touch um, and have that empathy. So it's important to create that space to connect on those topics. So the other pillar of FaceTime is getting together as a whole team. This is the weekly all hands. Um, and at Lassian, we have these at every level. So we have a weekly one with the entire company. We have monthly ones for the Trello organization um, when we have weekly ones for our sub teams. We call ours club marketing. We've given it a name and we've kind of branded it because we want to invest the time and the energy to make this the best meeting of the week. You want people to come to the all hands excited and ready to hang out. So why do we want to make it the best meeting of the week? All hands meetings are very expensive. When everyone's coming, you want to dedicate time to creating a meeting structure and atmosphere that makes it fun and valuable for everyone. Build the agenda in advance, especially as a team, an entire team. You want to crowdsource topics and segments, encourage people to prepare their assets and their activities in advance. We also have a custom field on the board where we get people to estimate the required time they're going to need. So we can ensure that the meeting is not too rushed or too empty. We want to make sure that there's a healthy pace. And talking about pace, we also want to rotate ownership roles. So we assign someone to be a meeting lead and someone to be a scribe or a note taker. And we rotate these to keep it fresh and give everyone that chance at growing those leadership skills of organizing an all hands meeting creating a great agenda and ensuring that everything runs smoothly. So this board is an exact copy again of the board that we use internally for our all hands meetings. Fairly simple. The leftmost list is the meeting template. This includes any cards that are mainstays of each meeting. Then the, the meeting lead is assigned and copies the template over, changes the list title to that week, and then starts organizing and crowdsourcing the agenda. You can actually use Butler automation to automatically assign the next lead and scribe. You just set up a rule for it, um, Butler to pick one of the board members and assign it to the card meeting lead um, at a certain time of the week which is really fun to save some time there. Um, you, all the cards for those meeting agendas should attach presentations and links for pre-reading. Um, and again, have time uh, a time estimate attached so we know how long it's gonna take. Um, I think on the January 23rd list, yes, at the bottom you can see a card called Team Bravo. We actually have two standing items in this meeting team woes and team bravos. And we always end with those. Team woes are mistakes we've made that have come out with important lessons that the entire team should learn. It's a great time to say, explain if something didn't go well, or you made a mistake, um, just to uh, help the rest of the team learn from those errors and avoid making them themselves. And then we always end every meeting with 
uh, round of bravos, thanking everybody for those special things that they did during the week that helped each other out. It really sets the mood, makes everyone walk away feeling really good and uh, keeps that energy up for the next week. So how do you know that setting up a invested, organized weekly team meeting and a template uh, Trello board for this is working? Well, hopefully your team is building these agendas without your friendly reminders. So you're not having to hound everybody to put in their meeting agenda items. They're thinking about this meeting, understanding that it's the time to help communicate and educate the team on what you're working on. And they're wanting to bring those items in. During the meeting, it's not overly rushed. So you're able to have space for them to participate in lively discussions and they're feeling comfortable with those woes and bravo sections to bring, share meaningful insights and thank yous with each other. When you have a really active and useful all hands meeting, you'll be more confident that your team is not working in silos and everyone is talking together. Okay, so home base is, is set. You've got regular meetings on the calendars. Let's take a break and talk about having some team bonding and fun in the process. Since uh, building in social time to the workday is to benefit the team, they should drive it. So I want to encourage your team to develop an ideas and optimize for those that, that gain traction with the group. If this sounds like I'm repeating myself, I am. Every touch point in your remote team where you can enlist the entire team to collaborate and co-create, you should be doing so. Um, this helps build culture and a set of cultural norms that creates those relationships. You can help the team facilitate their own social time and fun by ensuring that there is obviously a budget available and empowering the team to set up proper events. I should say that we recognize that not everyone is the natural event planner, but that doesn't mean that planning the events should fall to the people who love to do it. It's really good to give everyone a chance to show the team what their version of fun is. So keep a, a running list of approved vendors um, and ideas that's varied with prices. So people who aren't as comfortable can choose from a menu of ideas. But the biggest thing that you can do to normalize using work time for those non-work conversations, water cooler moments, relationship building social time is to be explicit that it's okay and encouraged to um, get to know one another and make time for spontaneous interactions at work. Trello is so flexible. It's really great that you can use it for meeting agendas and for having fun. So here's an example of a team icebreaker that you might want to run at the beginning of an off a virtual offsite or a longer meeting. Um, this is one called surviving the apocalypse. So I won't go into the instructions, but the basic premise is using a Trello board gives everyone an area to focus on. And also these kinds of games help you um, express personality and so let people get to know each other even if they can't do something together in person. Beyond these kind of one-off icebreaker type social events, you can also use Trello boards to build all manner of clubs or, or meetings. So here's an example of a book club that we've run internally. You can use a Trello board to track the books that people want to read. Um, you can feature which current book you're, you're talking about add in notes of past books, but just use these kind of as a planner for these social clubs. And I'm, we've had clubs of all different kinds, um, pet clubs, brewing clubs, books, um, you name it, people, dining clubs, rest cooking. It's, it's really everything under the sun that people have come up with to collaborate on a Trello board. So when you've worked social time explicitly into your workday, you should see your team taking the initiative to build in social interaction, whether it's in other meetings, just spending 10 minutes at the front end or creating monthly, you know, hang times where you've got a, a planned agenda and an activity. On the day-to-day, -day, you should see a healthy mix of work and casual conversations in your Slack channels 
in your Zoom meetings. And your team should be really open with you about how they're feeling about this sense of connection and social time. You should be hearing from them loud and clear if they feel like it's been all work and no play and they need more social outlets in order to feel connected to the team. Okay, so now that your team has a home base, regular FaceTime with their managers and team, a good balance of work and social time, let's turn to how to support your team to have a productive flow of project work. There's so much we could go into here. The I'm going to cover one specific um, aspect of project work. Specifically, I want to cover how to manage incoming requests and cross collaborative teams, whether that's larger project um, contributions or small tasks and requests that come in on a regular basis. The reason I want to cover this is this can be a huge time suck for remote teams, and it's the hardest work to track. Um, because we're often asked for a quick question over Slack, or um, we just get a one-off ping or email, these in in incoming requests often become the shadow work that bog down your team's time and energy. So it's really important to centralize uh, all of these requests in one place to protect your time and make it an agile process because the requests are gonna come in, they're gonna change, your areas of focus for your team are gonna grow or, or shift as years go on. Um, so you wanna make sure to be flexible with how these incoming requests are being handled, but ensure that they're being recorded. Then you'll triage these regularly, um, setting up a specific time weekly to, to talk about and, and manage them, helps your team be honest about what could they can tackle and when? So here's an incoming requests board that we use. We provide instructions in the first list for any incoming team to know how to request uh, different types of work from us and what they might need. Um, we'll often have more notes here so they can use like a template card, for example, to fill out. So there are, are certain required information that we need from each, um, from each person who comes in. If you have a business class or enterprise account with Trello, you can set up custom template cards for your team, which is really helpful. Incoming is where all the requests that aren't yet triaged should go. Um, we ask people add a label for the priority, tag themselves so we know who it's for and add any information that they can. Once we triage them, we move them into up next and doing as you would in any kind of agile Kanban process. The reason you might want this uh, to be flexible within Trello is you may not feel like you need like a review process right now, but maybe you do later. So you can quickly just double click between the doing and done lists, add an additional list for review, and then you could maybe kick it back to the person who requested it and, and complete that workflow. So we use this um, for every, every team, we just ask them to come to this one board and this is where we centralize all that work. So how can you know that an incoming request board is successful for your team? Your team should be directing all incoming requests to this central intake, whether that request is coming in a meeting, whether it's over Slack, whether it's over email, the response that they'll naturally go to is, Thanks, sounds great. Can you please log it on this board? Here's the link so that we can help you with that. Because we're trying to protect time and that's the, the understanding with this board, um, your team should be taking on these tasks as they are able rather than responding to each ping and ding that they get in Slack. Because we wanna make sure that people are prioritizing the right work first. Um, so they should be not a uh, reactionary to these requests. If you're a manager, you'll be able to see everyone's workload and priorities clearly on a board like this and understand the kind of spread of work and management. So there isn't a lot of shadow work happening in channels where you, where you can't see it because it's not as easy to understand and pick up on those cues when you're working remotely. How are we doing? We're on step six of seven. I know I've taken you on a journey. 
Uh, we've got two more to go, so stick with me. Um, these are two very important steps, these final two. We're going to talk about team health and performance reviews now. Then we're going to go into hiring and onboarding. So team health and performance reviews. These are so important. Regular reviews, feedback, and retrospectives help build your remote culture because this is an investment in the careers and health of your team over time. So at the beginning of the presentation, when I asked you to imagine what you'd like to see for your remote team culture in a year, two years, team health and performance reviews are going to help you get there. There is a certain level of formality that goes into performance reviews, specifically with HR um, and privacy. But what we also like to encourage is normalizing regular check-ins and times to get meta about how things are going because remote work requires more vigilance to make sure everyone is visible and recognized for their contributions. So we really wanna talk about making each conversation actionable. Adding a workflow into your growth planning means that any goals that you've set or ideas of things you might wanna try turn into tasks that get tracked to being done. Um, you want to do this not only for career conversations, but also for your team's health and your team performance. Atlassian offers a team health monitor play. You can search and find that on the website. It's a really great resource for facilitating an honest conversation with your team about their current experiences working together. And I'd really advise not to wait for an annual review cycle to talk about these things. Um, common challenges and team collaboration issues flare up quicker in a remote environment. So you, it's really important to work these into your team all hands, work these into your one-on-one -on -one meetings on a regular basis to keep, keep these communication channels open. And really, if you're not sure about what cadence to set, ask your team what they want. You might be surprised to find out they want to talk about this more regularly than you were, you were thinking. So the template I'm going to show you here is the Atlassian's Team Health Monitor play. This is a really great play to run quarterly, uh, maybe biannually. And it's really simple, but it really helps facilitate really uh, great conversations. So each list here uh, represents an aspect of the team dynamic. So your team's fun level, how you're working together, the shared mission. Are you delivering value? Is it easy to work? Are you, is it easy to ship the stuff? How are things going? There are three possible statuses per theme. So red is things are not going well. Yellow, it's, it's okay, it could be better. Green is we're good to go. What we do is get everyone into a dedicated time for an hour to an hour and a half. We use the voting power up on the board, have everyone vote on each list. Um, then you can start to see what results are polarizing. So maybe everyone feels like you're having a lot of fun, but it's not easy to ship stuff and it's painful to get work done. Use the time then to talk about what people are feeling, um, unearth blockers or things that we might be able to change and end with creating a list on the board of action items to help, help improve team health. From that list of action items, you can assign people and actually copy or move the cards over onto different project boards or one-on-one -on -one boards where you can help track those in your regular day-to-day -day workflows. Pretty simple uh, process, but can have a really big impact. You should have active progress on growth goals that you can track on the one-on-one -on -one board, like I mentioned earlier. You should have ongoing feedback from your team on the remote experience and ensure that these re reviews are scheduled and that you take time to talk about these things, even when things get busy, because we all get busy and we often put these things to the wayside. But if you're really investing in your culture, you need to make time to talk about it um, on a regular basis. So finally, I really hope that your remote culture continues to grow and I hope your remote team continues to grow. 
remote hiring and onboarding need attention to detail in particular to ensure success for each new hire. I'm sure I'll, I'm not sure, but I hope that you've had the chance to grow your team this year during COVID. And, um, I've certainly seen that it it is harder. It's harder to hire, um, people remotely. So I'm really grateful for the processes that we've learned, um, from over the last few years and put in place. Um, so let's close by looking at how to scale your teams from anywhere. So remote onboarding, it's really important to have a shared baseline for each new hire. This is what we talk about with a scalable process. It helps each manager ensure that every new hire is getting the same core set of resources. From there, they should feel totally uh, comfortable customizing it for their new teammate. And the template I'm going to show you shortly will help you achieve this. At Atlassian, we run a 90-day onboarding program for each new hire. We can get quickly distracted with our new teammates. It's easy to just show them the ropes for a couple of days and then let them get into their real job doing business as usual. But it's really important to establish understanding that this 90 days of onboarding is their job. And um, we want to make sure that we go beyond the surface with what they learn about getting into the company. I do want to call out that it's really hard to hire and onboard remotely. Pre-COVID at Trello, we would always host an offsite for the teammates first week and fly everybody into an office for a shared week together because establishing those initial relationships and building up that reserve of time familiarity with each other is really important to use for collaboration once we all go back home. I mean, we've all learned this year that we can successfully grow our teams remotely, but just know that it's going to take longer and it's going to need more focus to ensure that those key relationships develop properly. This is the template that we use at Atlassian for every new hire. Um, The great thing about using a template is that you ensure that the onboarding essentials like you see on the left are shared between everybody on your team. Everybody knows where the help desks and services are. They know which Slack channels are most important to add themselves to. They'll learn which Confluence pages and spaces they should navigate towards, et cetera. This goes back to setting up that home base. They have their own guide for how to use the home base from day one. And this guide is available asynchronously. That's why it's so powerful. They get set up with understanding how your remote culture works from day one. Helpful links. This is a great place to customize it for your team because we have shared resources at the corporate level, but our team teams all have different links that we need. And then we go into milestones. So these milestones set up for your first week, your first 30 days, your first 60 days, and so on. For this first week, I would highly encourage you as a manager to set up a daily one-on-one with your new hire and check in every day to see how things are going and how they're progressing on these action items. From then on, you can set separate um, monthly check-ins to to talk about the milestones. And it's also a really great idea to assign your new hire a buddy. So we have a buddy system at Atlassian, someone who can help also talk about this onboarding process with them. They can check in and see how they're doing, not just from their manager, but from a peer. So how do you know that your new hire is thriving with this 90 day template system? Well, they'll have access, complete access to all these resources from day one. They'll have instructions on how to use them and where to go. So they shouldn't spend quite as much time um, getting lost. The due dates and check-ins on this process turn onboarding into a project. This becomes part of their work, as I mentioned, and it's the first project that they should successfully achieve at their new job. And in between those times when you're doing those one-on-ones and they're getting used to remote life on your team, you'll be confident that they aren't wondering what to do next or feeling like they don't know if they have what to do on their plate. Instead, um, they'll can always go back to this 30, 60, 90 days 
and start working on another piece of their onboarding project. So get ready with your phone because I'm about to give you access to all of the templates and resources that I talked about today. Trello.com slash templates. This is our open source gallery of free templates that you can search hundreds of crowdsource templates from our users. Once all the ones I've shown you today from internally, these can be uh, copied into your own Trello teams. There's explanations about which power-ups, which automation we're using, tips, all of those things. So hopefully this is very um, helpful for you. And this entire talk is based off of a blog post that I wrote um, about managing a remote team, all of it inspired from different leaders at Trello. So you can also get a synopsis of this entire presentation at blog.trello.com slash how to manage a remote team. So I just want to thank you all so much for joining. I want to wish you best of luck in building out your remote team culture. Hopefully these kind of more actionable tips and templates help you feel like you've got a plan in place to go out and just create a great team experience for years to come.